Hello friends, I am Chevy. Welcome to my shed. How are you today? How's life in your world? How's things where you are? I hope it's fantastic. Everything here is wonderful. In 2020, I culled my collection of over 400 games down to around 75. And today we're going to talk about one of the games that stayed, and that is Wyatt Earp from Rio Grande Games. Now this game stayed in my collection for a couple of superficial reasons, but also because it's a great game. The superficial reasons are, I like Rummy. I really just enjoy playing Rummy. Number two, Mike Fitzgerald is one of my favorite game designers ever, and Mike Fitzgerald, if you don't know, created a whole series of games called Mystery Army. And Wyatt Earp is technically not part of the Mystery Army series, but it's Mystery Army. It fits Mike's system. Most of the Mystery Army games I prefer to play two-player, uh, especially Bonnie and Clyde and um, Jack the Ripper, <laughs> two really good two-player Mystery Army games. This Mystery Rummy game, even though it's not a Mystery Rummy game, I think plays really well with four, you know, however many players you have in your group. I think that it goes up to four players. Yeah, two to four players. But I think it's best with three or four. Uh, the box says best with three. It works great with four also. If you don't know what Mystery Rummy is, it's played very similarly to Rummy, where you'll have a hand of cards that have different colors instead of suits, and when you play them, the first person to play has to play three of a kind. So if I wanted to play Butch Cassidy, I'd have to put three out. Once somebody has played, you know, a, a set of cards, then anybody else can just put Butch Cassidy cards out, kind of like I'm playing on your thing. That's how Rummy works, that's how this game works. The reason this game works so well with, with more than two players is there's a lot going on. In this one, you have these wanted posters that are put out on the table. And on your turn, when you play cards, say we go back to Butch Cassidy, if I play three of these Butch Cassidy cards, I'm going to put some money on Butch Cassidy, right? And we're going to do this until everybody has played, or until one person has played the last card in their hand. Once that happens, we score the hand. And we go through each reward poster, and we determine who has the highest strength of of uh, that person. So, for instance, Butch Cassidy, if I had six... Technically, I wouldn't win it, but I would win the money that's on Butch Cassidy if nobody else can compete with me. In order for somebody to actually get paid out, they have to have at least eight strength. You can't actually get paid out for only having the, the three or the six. You'd have to have at least eight strength, and then you can get paid out. If you have more than uh, five, I think it is, if you have five more strength than any other player, you get all the money. Otherwise, you have to split it, and it, it goes first and second, I think. There, in addition to that, in addition to that mechanics, you're playing rummy, you're putting money on the things, you're getting money, you're going to play a series of hands. Uh, there's also sheriff cards, which let you put money on the outlaws, just, you can just put money on the outlaws. Um, you can have a stagecoach robbery, which if you're successful adds a whole bunch. And then there's like um, photos, you know, like uh, additional cards that add higher strength, but you play them like sheriff cards, they can only play one per turn, that increase your strength in that that outlaw so you don't necessarily have to have just the, the level two outlaw cards there's lots of other things going on and that's kind of the through line of all of mike fitzgerald's uh, mystery rummy series not only are you playing rummy you're drawing cards by the way you either draw from the top of the deck or the top of the discard pile uh you're drawing cards and playing cards in sets just like rummy but there's also this whole other layer of playing additional uh, bonus cards and the, the way that it works the reason that it works really well with four player is I can sit back and wait you know in rummy you're trying to dump your hand you're trying to really just throw your whole hand away as quickly as possible and score points and this you're trying to do that but you're also trying to get the most money right so if I see you thrown out your six you know butch Cassidy's right and now other people are going to put money on butch Cassidy I might have a big Butch Cassidy hand. I'm just going to hold it for a while. I'm going to hold it and try to throw it down and take Butch Cassidy for myself at the end of the round. And that means that there's a good bit of situational play, unlike traditional rummy where you're just trying to dump your hand as quickly as possible and screw other people. In this game, you don't lose points for having cards in your hand. So screwing other people isn't really beneficial to you. You're not losing points. You want to try to gain the most, and so it might be beneficial for you to hold on to a bunch of scoring cards for a particular outlaw, so that in that you know that last play of your turn, or the you know right before somebody goes out, you can dump and take control of that outlaw and not give somebody else the opportunity to take them back. 
Because if, if the person who played these three Butch Cassidy cards, or maybe they've played four, and they're just ignoring Butch Cassidy now because they feel like they have... They have the money. They're, they're going to get all the cash. They're going to play on other things. You're sitting here holding on to your 10 Butch Cassidy points because you have the, the sheriff card for Butch Cassidy. You're hoping to just, at the end of the round, dump it. They they don't have a chance to fight for their Butch Cassidy points, and you just take their money. Uh, really strategic play on top of Rummy. And I think that's what makes the whole Mystery Rummy series special. But again, this one stayed in my collection, not because it's just Mystery Rummy, but because it really works well with four people. Uh, the other ones kind of break down a little bit because, again, you're not... There's no benefit to going out quickly in the Mystery Rummy series, generally. There are in some of the other ones, and in a four-player game, it feels kind of cheap if somebody can go out quickly because you don't have a chance to, to, to develop any points. And this one, because it's money and because it's on these seven outlaws, uh, you you have a chance to get points at least and to do something regardless of how fast somebody goes out. And going out quickly, like I said earlier, doesn't really hurt anybody. So you're not gaining or losing by trying to dump your hand. You can play this a little bit more like, uh, what's the version of Rummy? Is it, it's not Bridge Rummy. Gin Rummy, where you, you, know, you can play it a little more, hold a lot more in your hand and make big plays, make big moves to try to take a, an outlaw from somebody. And it works really, really well that way. Uh, there's also, you know, the way that the deck is built, there's, there's an, I think it's, there's an even number of points available for each outlaw. And so you might be holding, just trying to get enough points that you, you know, you have exactly the same amount of points as I would have if you were to play your cards, which doesn't do you a whole, you're trying to steal my, my outlaw's points. And so you can be trying to hold on to cards hoping to get one of the sheriff cards to, to change things up. And um, it makes it just really interesting. Again, I haven't played this one in a long time. All of these games have been sitting on my shelf for a long time unplayed, and not because uh, I don't love the game. I absolutely love this game. Uh, we used to play this a whole, whole lot. It was a very, very regular game in our rotation. Uh, it just hasn't, you know, hasn't come to the table because of the flurry of games that have come out in the past 10 years or so. Um, you know, back in the day, <laughs> back in my day, you could you could keep up with all the games that are coming out, and you could say, oh, I'm going to play my old games because they're more interesting. Uh, nowadays, there's just so much coming out, so much more interesting things happening that it's really hard to uh, find time to play these older titles, even though I love them. Uh, and this one will stay in my collection forever, just because uh, I think it's a great gamer game. It has a lot of really good decisions. Again, a lot of little bit of take that because you you might be holding your hand to hope to take that from somebody. But it also, I think this would work really, really well as a gateway game. I think that it um, you could introduce this to just about anybody who's played Rummy before, and they would pick up on it very quickly. And uh, they would learn that there is a whole other layer of decision making to games that maybe they haven't seen before. So that's Wyatt Earp. One of my favorites. That's going to conclude this week of weird reviews. Thank you for being here as always. Thank you for liking, commenting, subscribing, being amazing friends with people. I really appreciate you. And I will see you on Monday. Today's word you should not have sound smart is libration. It is a noun meaning the oscillation of Earth's moon around its axis. Librations are caused by changes in the intensity of Earth's gravitational pull on the moon. Libration. L-I-B-R-A-T-I-O-N. Is that really just specifically about the moon? There's nothing else but librate? I mean, I'm actually asking that. I don't know. <laughs>